day, you cute angels. Welcome to a new matinee episode. I am Sir John Kevin, your teacher for graded mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your module, your pen and paper to write your answers as we progress with our discussion. Also, look for a place in your home where you feel comfortable and safe. And most importantly, prepare yourself to watch and listen carefully. In this learning episode, I will be guiding you in this week 5 lesson, quarter 1 of grade 8 mathematics. At the end of this lesson, we are expected to illustrate rectangular coordinate system and its uses. Today, you will learn about rectangular coordinate system. To start, I want you to imagine a plane without anything on it but a point. If I will ask you to describe of its location, more likely you will find it difficult, right? But if Mark's lines are drawn, the location of the point can be easily described. Whether it is to the left or to the right, or above or below the specific lines. For instance, point N is located to the right of line V and above the horizontal line H. And point R is to the left of vertical line V and below line H. And point O is neither to the left or to the right of B and it is on line B and it is also on line H. This concept is often applied in navigations and maps. Take a look at the Philippines on the world map. If we are going to locate it, we would notice the importance of these two imaginary lines, namely the primary region and the equator. Relative to these lines, the Philippines is to the right of primary region and above the equator. This idea of describing a point on the plane was systematized by a 17th century French mathematician and philosopher, René Descartes. This system that relates the correspondence between the points on the plane to a pair of real numbers is called rectangular coordinate system and also known as Cartesian plane. Rectangular coordinate system uses two coplanar perpendicular number lines. One is horizontal and the other one is vertical, whose point of intersection is called the origin. The horizontal number line is called the x-axis, while the vertical number line is called the y-axis. And part of the x-axis to the right of the origin and to the part of the y-axis above the origin are each considered the positive direction. Likewise, the part of the x-axis to the left of the origin and to the part of the y-axis below the origin are each considered as negative direction. Every point on the Cartesian plane can be described in terms of ordered pair x and y. The absolute value of x indicates its distance from the y-axis while the absolute value of y indicates its distance from the x-axis. The values or numbers in ordered pair x and y are called coordinates, in which the coordinates of the origin are 0 and 0. The x value or the first coordinate is called the abscissa or x-coordinate, while the other one which is the y value or the second coordinate is called coordinate or y coordinate. If you would notice, the Cartesian plane is divided into four regions, and these are called quadrants. We'll start to the upper right region, which is quadrant 1. If both x and y coordinates are positive, then the point is in quadrant 1. Next, by moving on counterclockwise direction, we have quadrant 2. If x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive, then the point is in quadrant 2. Next, we have quadrant 3. If both x and y coordinates are negative, 
Then the point is in quadrant 3. Lastly, we have quadrant 4. If the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is negative, then the point is in quadrant 4. This means that you can easily tell which quadrant an ordered pair is located by just simply looking at the signs of the coordinates. But there are also points which lie in the x and y axis. The points which lie in the x axis have coordinates x and 0. And the points which lie in the y axis have coordinates 0 and y, where x and y are real numbers. To understand better, let's try example number 1. Points A, B, C, D, E, and F are already plotted in the Cartesian plane. Point A has coordinates of 2, 0. Point B has coordinates of 4 and 2. Point C has coordinates of 0 and 6. Point D has coordinates of negative 8 and positive 4. Point E has coordinates of negative 4 and negative 6. And lastly, point F has coordinates positive 8 and negative 8 as shown in the illustration in figure 1. Find the location of the given points. If you notice, the points can be easily located since they are already plotted in the Cartesian plane. Let's start with point A. As you can see, it is located along the x-axis because the value of y is 0. Next, we have point B. Point B is located in quadrant 1 because the values of both x and y coordinates are positive numbers. Next, point C. Since the abscissa of the point C is 0, therefore, point C is located along the y-axis. Another, we have point D. Point D is located in quadrant 2. Because the sign of abscissa is negative and the sign of ordinate is positive. Next, we have point E. Since both coordinates of point E are negative, therefore, point E is located in quadrant 3. Lastly, we have point F. As you have noticed in point F, the sign of the abscissa or the x coordinate is positive and the sign of the ordinate or the y coordinate is negative, therefore, point F is in quadrant 4. Did you get it, graded learners? That's great! Let's now proceed with example number 2. In this example, use the Cartesian plane in figure 2 to find the coordinates of the following points. Point M, point A, point T, and lastly, point H. To identify the coordinates of the point, there are two steps that we need to follow. First, draw a vertical line passing through the point and the x-axis. The number associated to the point on the x-axis is the first coordinate or the abscissa. Lastly, for the second step, draw a horizontal line passing through the point and the y-axis. The number associated to the point on the y-axis is the second coordinate or the ordinate. So let's start with point M. To determine the coordinates of point M, first, we have to draw a vertical line from the x-axis passing through the given point M. And as you can see, the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa is negative 4. Next, for the last step, we have to draw a horizontal line from the y-axis passing through the given point M. And it gives us positive 6 for the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate. Therefore, the coordinates of point M are negative 4 and positive 6. Next, we have point A. To identify the coordinates of point A, we have to draw a vertical line passing through the x-axis and the given point A. And the x-coordinate or abscissa is negative 2. Next, let's draw a horizontal line. 
passing through the y-axis and the given point A. And the y-coordinate or the ordinate is negative 4. Hence, the coordinates of point A are negative 2 and negative 4. Next, we have point T. To determine the coordinates of point T, first, we have to draw a vertical line from the x-axis passing through the given point T. And the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa is positive 6. Lastly, we have to draw a horizontal line from the y-axis passing through the given point T. And it will give us positive 6 for the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate. Therefore, the coordinates of point T are positive 6 and positive 4. And for our last example, we have point H. To identify its coordinate, first, we have to draw a vertical line from the x-axis passing through the given point H. In that case, the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa is positive 4. Lastly, we have to draw a horizontal line from the y-axis passing through the given point H. By that, the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate is negative 8. Therefore, the coordinates of point H are positive 4 and negative 8. Did you understand class? Very good! Since you already know how to find the location and determine the coordinates of the point, let's now proceed in plotting the points. To graph or plot a point given its coordinate, there are three steps that we need to follow. The first step, we have to start at the origin 0, 0. Move to the right if the x coordinate or abscissa is positive, or to the left if it is negative along the x axis. Next, step 2. From that position on the x axis, move up if the y coordinate is positive, or move down if it is negative. Lastly, for the third step, draw a dot to represent the point described by the coordinates. For better understanding, let's have some examples. Plot the following points and identify what quadrants or axes do each belong. Point A has coordinates of negative 4 and positive 6. Point B has coordinates of positive 5 and negative 5. Point C has coordinates of negative 7 and negative 7. And lastly, point D has coordinates of 4 and 0. Let's start with point A. To plot or graph point A in the Cartesian plane, our first step is we have to begin at the origin. Then look at the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa in order for us to know if we move to the right or to the left along the x-axis. Since the abscissa is negative 4, therefore, we have to move 4 units to the left along the x-axis. For the step 2, we have to look for the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate. And as you can see, it is positive 6. Therefore, we have to move 6 units up. And for the third step, we can now draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point A. Since we already plotted point A, we can now easily determine its location. Hence, Point A is located in quadrant 2. Next, we have point B. To plot or graph point B, the first step, start the position at the origin. Then look for the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa and it is positive 5. That means we have to move 5 units to the right along the x-axis. For the step 2, Look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate, and it is negative 5. That means we have to move 5 units down. And for the last step, we're ready to draw a dot to represent the coordinates of point B. Since point B is already plotted on the Cartesian plane, it will be easy for us to determine its location. So, point B is located in quadrant 4. 
Another example, we have point C. To plot point C in the Cartesian plane, first, start at the origin. Then look for the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa, and it is negative 7. That means, we have to move 7 units to the left along the x-axis. Next step, look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate. And it is negative 7. That means from the position that we stop on the x-axis, we have to move 7 units down. Lastly, for the third step, let's draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point C. Since we already plotted point C, we can now easily find its location. And point C is located in quadrant 3. And for our last example will be point D. To plot point D in the Cartesian plane, first, begin at the origin. Then we have to look for the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa, and it is positive 4. Therefore, we have to move 4 units to the right along the x-axis. Next, look for the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate for us to know if we move up or down. Since it is 0, there's no movement will happen. And for the last step, we can now draw a dot to describe the coordinates of the point D. Now, we can easily identify the location of point D. And it is located along the x-axis. Did you understand grade 8 learners? Very good! Now, let's proceed to our activity. But before we begin, please be reminded that you may comment or ask questions at the comment section. You may type your name, section, school, and your answer. Our first activity is about determining the coordinates of the places given and identify which quadrants or axes do each belong. I will give you 5 seconds to answer each question. Are you ready grade 8 learners? That's great! Let's try number 1. Describe the location of Siargao del Norte. I will give you 5 seconds to answer. Time's up! Remember, to determine the coordinates of the point, these are the two steps that we need to follow. First, draw a vertical line passing through the x-axis and the given point. And the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa is negative 2. Lastly, draw a horizontal line passing through the y-axis to the given point. And the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate is negative 1. Therefore, the coordinates of Siargao del Norte are negative 2 and negative 1. And it is located in quadrant 3. Did you get the same answer class? That's great! Next, we have number 2, Kabadbaran City. Describe its location. Your 5 seconds start now. That's correct. Kabadbaran City has coordinates negative 1 and 0. And it is located along the x-axis because the value of y-coordinate is 0. Another, we have number 3. Describe the location of Sergao City. Timer starts now. Time's up! To determine the coordinates of Surigao City, first, we have to draw a vertical line passing through the x-axis and the given point. And the x-coordinate or the abscissa is negative 2. Lastly, draw a horizontal line passing through the y-axis and the given point. And its y-coordinate or the ordinate is positive 2. Therefore, the coordinates of Surigao City 
are negative 2 and positive 2, which is located in quadrant 2. Did you get the same answer, grade 8 learners? Very good! Next, we have number 4, Agusan del Sur. Describe the location of this place. Key your answers now. That's right! Agusan del Sur has coordinates negative 1 and negative 3. Because if you draw a vertical line passing through the x-axis and the given point, the x-coordinate or the abscissa will be negative 1. And if you draw a horizontal line passing through the y-axis and the given point, the y-coordinate or the ordinate will be negative 3. And Agusan del Sur is located in quadrant 3. Next, for the last number, number 5, Describe the location of this lake city. I will give you 5 seconds to answer. Time's up. To determine the coordinates of this lake city, first, we have to draw a vertical line from the x-axis to the given point. And the x-coordinate or the abscissa is positive 3. Lastly, we have to draw a horizontal line from the y-axis to the given point. And the y-coordinate or the ordinate is negative 3. Therefore, the coordinates of this lake city are positive 3 and negative 3. And it is located in quadrant 4. Did you get the same answer, class? That's great! For that, we're done with the first part of our activity. Now, let's proceed to the second part of our activity in which you are going to plot points on the Cartesian plane. Before we begin, make sure that you have your graphing paper and your ruler. Okay, let's start. Plot the following points in the Cartesian plane. I will give you 30 seconds to answer or you may pause this video. Are you done, graded learners? Very good. Now, let's check your answers. Let's start with point A. To plot the point A, first, start at the origin 0 and 0. Then look at the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa and it is negative 8. That means we have to move 8 units to the left along the x-axis. Next, for the second step, Look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate and it is positive 4. From the position that we stop on the x-axis, we have to move 4 units up. Lastly, draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point A. So point A is located in quadrant 3. Did you get the same answer class? Very good! Next, we have point B. To plot point B for the first step, we always start at the origin. Then look at the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa, which is negative 2. That means we have to move 2 units to the left along the x-axis. Next, for the step 2, look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate and it is negative 6. That means we have to move 6 units down from the position that we stop on the x-axis. Lastly, draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point B. Now, let's proceed to number 3, point C. To plot point C in the Cartesian plane, first, start at the origin 0 and 0, then look at the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa which is positive 5. That means we have to move 5 units to the right along the x-axis. Next, for the second step, look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate, and it is positive 5. From the position that we stop on the x-axis, we have to move 5 units up. Lastly, 
draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point C. Next, for number 4, we have point D. To plot point D first, begin at origin. And look at the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa in order for us to know if we move to the left or to the right along the x-axis. And its value is 0. That means we have to stay at the origin. Since the x-coordinate or abscissa is 0. For the step 2, look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate. And it is negative 8. That means we have to move 8 units down. Lastly, draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point D. Did you get the same answer, grade 8 learners? Very good! Now let's proceed to our last item, number 5, point E. To plot point E first, start at the origin. Then look at the value of the x-coordinate or the abscissa which is positive 10. That means we have to move 10 units to the right along the x-axis. Next, for the second step, look at the value of the y-coordinate or the ordinate. And as you can see, it is negative 3. From the position that we stop on the x-axis, we have to move 3 units down. Lastly, draw a dot to describe the coordinates of point E. Congratulations, grade 8 learners, for another excellent performance. You may take a screenshot of your answers and type in your scores. For your assignment, answer Drill 1 and Drill 2 on page 12 on your instructional support materials. Okay, that is all for now. I hope you learned from me and enjoyed our lesson for today. Don't forget to send your answers to your respective bad teacher. Again, this is Mr. John Kevin and Calara, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Until next time, have a nice day, be safe, and God bless us all. <music>